Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Really great to see you again after so many years. <laughs> I know. I can't believe it's been so long, Michael. So we met for the first time uh, and we did have a wonderful time because I do remember those days and I was enjoying it immensely with uh, during the days of Anthony Robbins at the London Excel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had some many crewing experiences down there. Met some yeah. wonderful people. We must have been mad. And, you know, people always ask me, what, you go and crew for Tony Robbins for free? What's all that about? You know, <laughs> well, they don't understand. There are some so amazing souls that get together and have a good time. And um, in fact, I crewed um, in 2019 um, again. And then, um, yeah, or was it? No, 2018, I went back again. And then 2019, I did it again. I, I don't know what it was. I had a massive kind of gap. And then I went, oh, he's coming again maybe i should go and have a look but yeah i had a good time and then my wife did upw in 2019 for the first time so that was really cool anyway today's about you and about your story and we'd love to hear all of it <laughs> <laughs> and um so if you could get started with where you were born have you moved around? Where did you go to school? What did you study? Then transition into career, transition out of career into kind of business and what you're doing today. And then, yeah, please tell us everything, Deborah. Over so to the you. Li the life story in a nutshell. Yeah, um, no. Yeah. Well, you've got you've got longer than a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was born in Burnley, and um, I think my lust for travel came because when I was um, two years old my mum and dad emigrated to Australia and we lived in Australia for four years returning to Burnley when I was six years old and so I've right. been educated in Burnley you know I went to St Mary's primary school where my mum was a, a primary school teacher there then I went to St Hilda's girls high school um, and being the eldest of five girls going to an old girls school didn't do me any good at all because I was terrified of boys I'd never had any social contact <laughs> with them yeah so going my dad sent me to uh, judo uh, classes when I was 11 years old and that was a real blessing for me because then I got to mingle with the opposite sex and find out that I was actually really very good at judo and actually when I was 16 years old Michael I was the girls judo champion of Burnley and oh. we started off by talking about Tony Robbins and do you know when you're doing the firewalk and you're doing all those anchoring techniques to get really get into state yes well, that moment that I stood on that stage feeling so powerful and so proud and unstoppable was that moment when I won that championship. So that was yeah. my anchor for doing the wow. fire walk. And it's That's it's brilliant. really, really powerful. And it's an emotion that I can just access at any time just by doing my move. <laughs> so awesome. And oh, and I'm there. So it's been it's <laughs> really powerful. So Fantastic. Going, uh, going to school, I mean, um, I absolutely detested school. I wasn't mm. academically gifted. I found it really difficult to learn because I was a kinesthetic learner. And yes. I found a lot of the teachers were chalk and talk and it, I found it really difficult to learn and retain the information because yeah. of the way I taught. And, and I remember when I was 14, I got shingles at school, which <gasps> meant that I had three weeks off school. And that was brilliant because when I went back to school, I'd missed quite a lot of my studies. And so I was allowed to drop history and geography and take extra typing lessons, which suited me down to the ground because yeah. I loved typing. And so I left school with uh, a, a prize in typing. I was really good at English and I set mm. my first goal at 16. And I was inspired when reading the Burnley Express because I'd read about a woman who'd set up her own business in secretarial and office services. Right. And I thought, I can do that. <laughs> I'm good at typing. I'm good at uh, English. I just need to go into industry and get some experience. 
So I yeah. went to Burnley College, which is actually where I met my future husband. Um, yeah. I uh, started a career in secretarial services, private secretary. Um, and then when I was 21, to the horror of my parents, you know, I had a really good job working for the district education officer as his secretary. And I chucked it all in to go cycling around Europe for 12 months. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> My That's unusual terrified. for a British <laughs> girl to be going cycling. <laughs> well, it was Brian who inspired me. He said that he always wanted to go travelling. I said, well, if you're going, I'm coming with you. <laughs> oh, mean, brilliant. And we talked about how we're going to do this. You know, and we talked about getting an old banger and thought, well, if it's an old banger, it's not going to last very long. We don't no. have money for repairing it. And so, I used to be a motorbiker back in them days, and I had a motorbike. Right. And thought, shall we go on the motorbike? And then it was well, there again, you know, it were limited if something goes wrong with it. So we ended up thinking, push bikes. We can go under our own pedal steam. Wow! Then. And so, how far did you get? We We got the train to Switzerland, and we cycled through Switzerland, Italy, all down the Adriatic coast of Italy down to Brindisi, we got the ferry over to Corfu, then we got the ferry to mainland Greece and cycled from Petras to Athens in a headwind, which is the most difficult journey I've ever done. It was like, it, it was like really, really tough. And we stayed in Athen Athens for three months and then we headed up to um, Italy and cycled from Venice um mm. over the, the pyrenees mountains into france monaco france all around the coast into spain so we we had a fabulous adventure that's a long distance how many kilometers or miles did you do I haven't a clue <laughs> haven't a clue <laughs> thousands by the sounds of it my god that's that's incredible yeah I mean, that's quite a challenge. I mean, uh, yeah, but uh, do you know what? We, we, and we'd saved up five hundred pounds each, and we were away for all that time on five hundred pounds for twelve months, and that really taught us about budgeting, about mm. um, being resourceful. Uh, I also remember when I was in Italy, you know, I got my auntie to write out a phrase in Italian because we didn't speak Italian. And I got no. my auntie to write out a phrase for me, we were saying, possiamo mettere la tenda sul suo terreno, per favore. And, and uh, apparently that means, please can I put my tent on your land for the night? Right. However, I found out uh, a couple of years ago when in an Italian restaurant and uh, practicing my phrase, my Italian phrase on the Italian waiter who was quite horrified. Actually, it has a double meaning and uh, he was quite <laughs> shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody is Italian and they're listening to this, um, do let me know if I've got the right meaning. <laughs> you were talking, of course, so you do. You were camping on the ground, <laughs> on his yeah. ground. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that's that's yeah. Uh, how old were you again? Remember, remind me. Twenty-one. That's quite young for an adventure like that, isn't it? I don't but, know because like there's a lot of people that travel mm. and uh, you know the more travel that I've done in my lifetime the more I realize that people do opt for um, a nomadic lifestyle yeah yeah okay so that took 12 months mm -hmm. what happened when you got back well when I got back I I, I did some temping jobs and then uh, landed a job as um <clears throat> branch administrator for a window company that was going through a very aggressive um, expansion program and I worked for this company for 12 months um, Brian who was now then my fiance had moved down to Burnley and I got him a job in the same company as a right. canvasser going out knocking on doors you know trying to get leads and oh, yes. um, yeah I remember all the all the door knockers yes and, then um, I, I realised after 12 months, I'd, I'd sort of um, done what I could in that branch and I didn't feel that I was growing anymore. I felt that I was like limiting my own potential. And so yeah. I actually uh, created my own job by coming up with a proposal, speaking to the managing director and pointing out to him that we needed 
um, somebody who was going to systemize all the processes in the company because everybody in the different branches was doing something different. Yeah. Um, the staff were being recruited by the branch manager who wasn't recruiting on skills, who either were recruiting on other criteria, which um, salespeople back then, you know, had a very bad re reputation. Uh, and I know that a lot of the girls were going through a lot of sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, something needed to be done about this. So I created my own job as national admin manager. Wow. And I, um, you know, I've got a lovely company car and, you know, living the good life and on mega money and everything. And, um, and then my ex-husband, uh, Brian, because we got divorced in 2004, we were married by this time. And yes. he left the company to go and work for a rival company. And I was dismissed. Um, so I took the company to court on, uh, for unfair dismissal, was yeah. awarded uh, £2,000, which I then used to set up my own secretarial business. Right. And going back to uh, school, when I dropped uh, history and geography to do extra typing, and, and mm. uh, very, very good at typing, and I was inspired after reading an article in the local paper about yes. a girl who'd set up her own business, it was now time to put it into practice because I got the industry experience. I, I set up my own business in secretarial and office services, and um, this business was very successful. And, and my first goal was to run the business for five years because statistically startup businesses got out of business within the first three years yes and and i wanted to prove to myself that i could be a success and so i yeah. ran it for five years started off uh doing sort of you know word processing uh expanded into desktop publishing when new software came out did speciality in cvs um, then expanded into printing and, and I, I had like some staff working for me and, and and it was really really good but then it's like I wasn't learning anything again you know and it's I got to a point in the business where I was bored with it I felt like a glorified secretary for other people and I wasn't right. expanding my own skills so I went back into industry and um I started off as PA to the managing director of the company that my ex-husband had left uh, the company for to go and work for. Right. Uh, and and <laughs> after oh. working there for uh, six months, I was promoted to quality manager. And, you know, I I'd, I'd sort of performed different roles within that organisation, which broadened my experience. Yeah. And I left there to go and work for a, a training organisation, which there again expanded my skills. I got lots of experience in being an assessor for NVQs. Yeah. Uh, I was promoted to commercial business manager. So I'd go into companies, look at what the systems were, what, where the needs were, the training, and I'd look at how we could support them. And then I started yeah. like assessing NVQs in management, you know, at level five and, gotcha. and, and everything. And then uh, from that company, um, I actually left there to go and work for Burnley Enterprise Trust, which is the organisation that I'd got business support from when I was setting my own business right. in 1988. So it's like I'd come full circle. It's a very small community there in Burnley, isn't it? <laughs> it was really great because I had a lot of autonomy in that role. Uh, I started off there as business support manager. And I was running the startup training for, um, yeah. you know, for people coming through that startup program. Um, and I loved my role there. But then I got promoted to executive director. And then all the things I loved about my job, I found out that I wasn't enjoying anymore because like other people were doing those roles. Yes. And my head was stuck in the project management and the finances. And those are aspects which to me, I absolutely hate doing. Mm. And, and and it was a big lesson for me, you know, in, in when you're actually looking at your job roles and when you're creating roles uh, for yourself, do the things that you love, do the things that you feel passionate about and then get yeah. other people to do the bits that you don't like. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. And and the, what's funny is we ran um, 
a couple of projects. We ran a young entrepreneur project. So I wrote a program called Are You Up For It? Uh, and we delivered this to school children at Turf Moor in Burnley. And uh, it was a huge success, you know, and it was all about inspiring young entrepreneurs to set up businesses because I know from my own experience I was inspired when I was at school to set up yeah. my own business and that's not a yeah. career option which is traditionally given to you no. but a career service no it isn't so for me it's about planting those seeds and mm. then we ran a women into business project and I became so inspired myself uh, I always remember when um, we were at the Life Mastery, Tony Robbins Life Mastery program up in uh, Scotland. And uh, I don't know if you remember Shaw Slocum, Michael. Yes. Sh Shaw yes. was one of Tony Robbins' lead trainers, and he was yes. running the, uh, the Life Mastery program that I was on. And he said, when you start to do what you put on this earth to do and truly live your purpose, and you step through the door, and close it behind you, you're burning your bridges so there's no going back. The mm. universe will open doors for you that would never have opened had you not made that decision. Mm. And I took this literally and I went back to work. We had a <clears> board <throat> meeting three days later and I handed my notice in. <laughs> I know, and I always remember that because uh, uh, um, I was uh, only one of uh, two women on the board. And the other woman wasn't there, the other female director. And I just said, mm. gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. I've decided I'm going to do what I'm put on this earth to do. And I'm giving you nine months notice to leave because I'm setting up my own <laughs> business. <laughs> and then this voice in my head's going, are you mad? You're giving up a really <laughs> secure, well-paid job. By this time, I was going through a divorce because my husband had left me uh, for somebody else. And so the, the household income had halved. Mm. My expenses had doubled because it was just me paying everything. Yeah. And I had two children at home and then I'm giving up a secure job to start mm. up on my own with no customers. <laughs> and uh, but I just knew that it was what I needed to do. Yeah, I'm 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 guilty. I that's exactly what happened to me pretty much <laughs> word for word. <laughs> yeah, I left. Um, I will never forget it. I left on the 4th of July 2005 Independence Day and I'd resigned obviously six months prior to that in fact I left earlier than the six months notice that I was working and exactly the same I had no experience in business running my own business I had no you know yeah hundred <laughs> percent I know the feeling <laughs> okay so yeah. So, so I, and, I set up my business, which was called Global Hugs, and uh, and I gave it that name, Hugs, because I remember when uh, when Brian and I split up in 2004, I took my two children, Christopher and Emily, they were 14 and 16 at the time, to Tony Robbins' event down in London. Yes. And um, I just thought that this is the best investment I can ever give them in their mm. future. Yeah. And at that event, I got so many hugs from complete strangers. Mm. And when I went back to Burnley, I went for a night out down to the local pub with my girlfriends. And at the end of the night, I said, come on, girls, let's have a group hug. And I invited two of our male friends into the circle. And then we had individual hugs. And I always remember my friend Steve said to me, he said, do you know what, Deborah? I didn't realise how much I needed that hug. He yeah. said, I haven't had a hug for five years since me and my wife split up. Whoa. And it was in that moment that my hug mission was born, you see. And yeah, so yeah. I used to just offer people hugs as, uh, to help the excluded to feel included. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd offer homeless people a hug. And a lot of them would say to me, that means more to me than people giving me money because we're yes. treated like lepers. Yes. Um, yeah. And going to networking events, you know, everybody's there being very formal with handshakes. And I would just say, I'm the director of Hugs for Global Hugs. Would you like a hug? And I put my <laughs> arms out. And there were two reactions to this. Some people would say, oh, yes, oh, please. No. And we'd have a hug. And other people would say, uh, no, I'm all right, thank you. I say, <laughs> I'm all right. Okay. I do hands as well. <laughs> so we'd have a handshake. <laughs> but do you know what? People have never, ever forgotten me for that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
Amazing. And, you know, that brand and, and that uh, just being authentic and in, in my, my mission and who I am yeah. is memorable because people remember how you make them feel. Mm, 100%, yeah. Yeah. So how did you, I mean, Global Hugs, how did you, did you monetize that in some way? Well, uh, I actually called my business Global Hugs and, and yes. I thought, how am I going to get my coaching and training business into hugs? And so I, I, yeah. de I developed it into an acronym and it right. stood for Hunger for Unlimited Growth of Self. So that's where the hugs came in ah. and how I tied it into what I was actually doing. Oh, the brilliant. director of hugs was my job title, you see. Got you. I understand now. So it was a coaching company, essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was coaching uh, entrepreneurs, chief execs. Um, so I was doing business coaching. I ran business mastermind groups. Uh, but yes. I was also trained with Harry Singer at the Youth Coaching Academy in London. Yes, and, yeah, I know uh, Harry. Yeah. After uh, attending the Wealth Mastery course down in London, I realised I needed um, another source of income. Mm. And um, I started offering supported lodgings for homeless right. teenagers. Oh, and so wow. Come and live with me for up to two years because I had a really big house, five bedrooms, two spare bedrooms. And so yeah. I offered supported lodgings for up to two years for homeless teenagers. And I was able to support them with my coaching skills. In fact, one of the young men, Ashley, I took him down to uh, Unleash the Power Within and he got a place on the Discovery Camp and he ended up right. winning a scholarship to go to Discovery Camp in America. And that was life transforming for him. Mm. And now he's running his own business in woodwork and he's absolutely flying. Oh. And so it's lovely to be able to have a positive impact with young people. It's, you know, something that's really close to my heart. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And so how many teenagers, teenagers, you said, how many of them did you have come through your house effectively? Um, gosh, one, two, probably about about 14 to 16 over a two year gosh. period. Yeah. Uh, some would stay longer, some were mm. emergency placements. And yes. I do respite placements for other carers for when they were going on holiday. Wow. And then um, it was really interesting because um, I was having a coaching session myself because as coaches, you know, we know the importance of coaching for ourselves. Mm. And I was having a coaching session and I was asked a question <laughs> which sort of uh, made me think. And the question was, Deborah, how far down on your list of priorities do you come? Mm. And I started to make a list of all the people that I was putting before me. And I realized yes. that I was number eight on my own list. Wow. And then I read Tim Ferriss's book, uh, The Four Hour Work Week. Yeah. And he talks about the new rich and how the new rich have a series of mini retirements in their life rather than waiting until retirement age and then enjoying the life. And I thought, oh, what a good idea. I'm going to have a mini retirement. <laughs> and so I gave my children six months notice to leave home. Um, I stopped doing the six. supported lodgings. <laughs> I right. sold my house to my next door neighbour who's always said to me, if ever you move, give me first refusal. I gave virtually everything away to like the women's refuge and charity and my furniture set up my son in his house, my daughter in her house, my nephew in his house. And so virtually I became a nomad and I booked a one-way ticket to Peru. And this was a journey of me learning to really love me because it's the first time in my whole life that I'd ever spent any time on my own. And wow. I was in the Amazon rainforest, uh, working with the Shipibo tribe and um, working with sacred plant medicines, which gave me a whole new um, aspect to myself as a multidimensional being. Mm. You know, and, and, I, I, and I, I was shown many insights, I, I got many insights, from working with uh, with the plant medicines and and it led me on this this journey of self discovery, and this mm. journey of living a very very high vibration existence and being able to manifest like that as I was moving 
around Peru because I'd gone to Peru not having any money. My sister had lent me a thousand pound, and um, and that money lasted me. I was away for eleven months, and as I was running out of money, I just set the intention, and it would drop in. So, for example, as um, I was living in this sacred valley in Peru in Olantitambo, and uh, I set the intention to have free food and accommodation living in heaven, wherever that was. And then yes. I saw an event advertised on Facebook of all places in the, in the next village, there was going to be a, um, like a, a gathering of uh, spiritual souls. And I felt really called to go. And then the woman who was running this event put a post up the same afternoon saying she was looking for somebody to go and live there on a work exchange basis. Uh, for free food and accommodation. I went, yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and that person. <laughs> yeah, and so it was, it was just like synchronicity after synchronicity the yes. whole time. And and uh, what I really learned was that I am a magical creator. We all are magical creators and we can create whatever we want because every thought we have is a seed of creation. Mm. And when we're living a high vibe life, well, then we manifest a lot quicker. So long as our emotions are on an even keel. Yes. Um, and so I, I just had all these amazing transformational experiences whilst I was in Peru. Yeah. When I came back to the UK, this would have been um, August 2014. Um, I had six months of not doing anything, just being really still and integrating my, my journey. Yeah. And, um, I'd, uh, I was offering free hugs at the yoga show in Manchester uh, with my friend Paul. And um, so over the three days of this event, my friend Dawn came and, and she gave me an essential oil experience with one drop of peppermint oil. And yeah. I could not believe how potent this one drop of oil was. I could feel it working for like two and a half hours. I went, oh my goodness, what is this? Never yes. felt anything like it, and my intuition was telling me to to look into it. And mm. I had really sore knees because I've been doing a lot of mountaineering when I was in Peru. And she gave me uh, this rub to put on, and all the pain went away instantly. And it was like, yeah. wow! And my intuition was telling me to buy a set of oils. Bearing in mind that I'd come back from Peru owing Paul five hundred quid because he'd lent me money to fly home because I didn't have any. <laughs> And yes. then my intuition is saying buy a set of oils. And the cheapest set of oils was like, um, I think it was about £115, which mm. to me was an enormous amount of money when I didn't have any and I didn't have an income coming in. Yes. Um, but I always follow my intuition. So I bought a set of oils. Right. And then it's turned into a business for me. And now, you know, I teach classes in teaching people about essential oils. And now right. it's like joining the dots. I was working in the Amazon with plant medicines, the natural healers, the potent, you know, we were using medicines for clearing the blood and, yes. and for resetting the, the digestive system and all sorts of like things that we'd go out into the Amazon rainforest and pick off the, off the trees and the vines and yeah. grow yeah. up and, and drink these horrible potions. And then they come into uh, essential oils and they're realizing that essential oils, are, it's like the soul of the plant. They are potent, right. potent plant medicines. So I started to um, learn about essential oils and teach people about them. That led to a business, which I had no idea that it was going to work like that. Yes. Um, and Paul and I were in a relationship, and we'd been in a relationship for sort of nine years. And mm. then uh, on our ninth anniversary, we reevaluated the relationship and realized that it had run its course in its present form. And so we changed our relationship status on that day from partners to best friends. And he's right. still my best friend. Oh, but, wow. And this was in, um, in December, and it was round about the 26th of December, I think it was Boxing Day, then we're having this conversation. And I said I'd move out on the 1st of January. Mm. But I had no idea where I was going to go. I wasn't bringing in enough income to get a mortgage or pay no. rent because it was like a lifestyle business that I was just getting going. Yes. And I just thought, Deborah, remember, you are a powerful creator. You can create anything. 
what mm. would be a creative solution to not having anywhere to live? Yes. And so I just set that intention and then it dropped in. It was so obvious. I had friends who were house and pet sitters. Yes. And I thought, I can do that because then I don't need money for mortgage. I don't need money to pay bills. I'm living in other people's houses, looking mm. after the property and the pets when they go on holiday. Mm. And we'd gone to an event in Manchester. I set the intention for my first job to come in. I told my friend and she said, why don't you put an advert in the lady magazine? I said, I don't have time for that. I said, I'm, you know, I need to move out on the 1st of January. I don't need to do that anyway. Anyway, no. five minutes later, I got my first pet sitting job. And <laughs> right. The first person I told said, I'm going away on the 1st of January. Would you like to come and look after my cat and my, my fish? I said, yeah. So that started off my house and pet sitting business, which was called Hugs House and Pet Sitting Service. Hey. <laughs> and I started off doing it for free. Um, yes. And then I realized that I was providing a really valuable service. 100%. And so yeah. I started charging for my service. And it was really um, for two years, I was running that business, living in complete trust, not knowing from like one job to the next when yes. the next one would drop in. Yeah. And uh, it's like I was testing myself at my powers of creation and trust in myself yeah. and also yeah. in the universe to provide and and i remember sometimes even the day before i had no idea where i was going to be the following day mm. and i'd just say right okay we're having a laugh now let's just like drop in the next job because <laughs> 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 I, I always remember michael i don't know if you remember when we were doing date with destiny course and we went through our list of uh six human needs and at that time, back in 2004, I had a very, very high need for certainty. Yes. And I switched mine and got rid of the certainty so that mm. I replaced it with uncertainty. So I'm able to live with an enormous amount of uncertainty in my life. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that requires, a, that requires a huge amount of trust. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's trusting yourself. Yes, because I always remember Tony Robbins telling us the more uncertainty that you can live with, the happier you'll be. Mm. And it's so true. So I've been on this journey, you know, <laughs> yeah. to to live that that walk, that path of trust, learning to love myself, learning to trust myself and learning yeah. that that all my needs will always be taken care of. Yeah. Wow. Now, what happened was that, uh, so I've, I've been running this pet sitting business and, mm. and, and it was so successful. I even had people doing jobs for me. I set up like a little agency. Um, so for the jobs, instead of turning jobs away, in which case you're then losing customers, um, I would take the jobs on and find someone in my close circle of trust to go and do that job. Because I had, by this time, other women contacting me looking at the lifestyle that I was leading and, and being inspired and wanting to live that same life of freedom. Yes. So I was able to give them a taste of that. They would get 75% of the fee and I would get 25% as an agency fee for getting that job, doing the paperwork uh, and setting it all up. Wow. And then it came to uh, last year mm. and world events changed. And then overnight, worldwide travel stopped. And all yeah. my pet sitting work stopped overnight. Yeah. When we went into lockdown. Of course. And then my ex husband died. Uh, he had a brain tumour. And uh, I took a couple of months out to be really still and quiet and to grieve his passing. Because although he'd left me for someone else, you know, we still loved each other dearly. And, mm. um, you know, one of my gifts is being like, as a way show is being able to show people new paradigms and how endings can be transformed into something else. So um, yeah. going back to 2004, when he'd left me for somebody else, because of the training that I'd done, I knew that if I found an empowering meaning for that, instead of going into victim mode and feeling yes. all sorry for myself, yes. I could get through it. Yeah. And after two days, I, I came up with the empowering meaning that he'd left me and I could now become the person that I'm destined to be. Yeah. So every time I felt, you know, I thought about him leaving me, I felt empowered. 
and I was envisioning mm. me becoming the person that I'm destined to be. Yeah. And so I was able to go through a divorce without any arguments and to have that friendship. I even went to his wedding when he remarried, you know, to do the video and photographs and we became an extended family. Mm. And so when he when he passed away, I was grieving for him yeah. because like yeah. he was such a big part in my life. And him leaving me when he did was part of my own awakening and me stepping into my personal power and yeah. and living the life that I've always known that I was destined for. Yeah. And so when we fast forward now to him actually, you know, going, um, it was in May last year. And so I'd spent some quiet time. I wasn't running my essential oil business. I was doing nothing apart from just being in nature. And yeah. um, I remember a friend sent me a video and she said, Deborah, she said, I know that you're into energy and vibration. And she said, have a look at this video and see what you think. Mm. And I watched this video and I just got tingles all over. It's like the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. And I could feel um, like this energy coming in and I knew that my intuition was telling me to research what right. and take note. So I spent yeah. 48 hours researching everything I could about this frequency technology. Yes. And I had a call with, uh, with Cindy in America who demonstrated the equipment to me and showed me how through long distance you can read somebody's aura and it'll show you what percentage the chakras are functioning at and it was like wow <laughs> i mean wow. how can i buy this this equipment and uh you know i find out that the entry level uh, for the technology was 500 euros uh and the top of the range one that she was using was two and a half thousand euros and i didn't wow. have two and a half thousand euros but no. when does money ever stop me from doing Never. what i'm being called to do <laughs> and i thought do you know what I've got a credit card and I've got 3,000 limit on that. So I'll just get it on my credit card because I always pay my credit cards off every month. But so, I, you know, I had plenty of capacity on there. Yes. So I invested in, in the top of the range device. It arrived. I charged it up. I did a scan on myself. And then a friend of mine in South Africa had had a, a sudden death in the family and she'd gone mm. into an emotional meltdown. Right. And I just said to her, do you want to hop on Zoom and I'll send you some frequencies? And I didn't have a clue what I was doing, Michael. Right. <laughs> I was just following my, my guidance. And yeah. um, and I just called him, you know, my team of helpers. I was like, come on, guys, help me out here. What do I actually do? And so I just sent her the, some frequencies and she yes. had an immediate healing. And my intuition just guided her to work with these frequencies because once you connect it to anything in the information field you can pull it down at will and i just said to her you can call these in just through intention so continue yeah. to work with them and she did for like the following two months unbeknown to me and she had uh, transformations in other areas of her life Fabulous. and and so like from from starting this business last year it's led into a global business i've got over 330 people on my team now in the UK, America, Australia, uh, Asia, all, all over the world. I'm yes. building a, a global movement to raise the vibration of 10 million souls. This is what I'm wow. called to do and be part of this shift in consciousness because this technology is helping us to raise our vibration. Yeah. It's actually... Um, it's classified by, uh, it's cleared by the FDA as a, a pain device for the relief of pain because it's okay. working with microcurrents. So it's delivering little electrical impulses to the cells, yes. Yes. Uh, which stimulates the mitochondria in the cells. So it gives you more energy. Yeah. It uh, increases protein synthesis and amino acid transport. So there's a lot of health benefits mm. using it as a health and wellness tool. Yes. Uh, and a lot of biohackers are using it for getting maximum results out of the body. Yes. But we can use it for so many different purposes because it's got over 120 programs. So wow. just from me following my intuition, taking action, being guided in yes. how to use the device, uh, it's led to a global business for me. I also offer one-to-one -one sessions, quantum frequency sessions for people where we craft a very specific intention statement based from the reports that come out. 
yeah. which, uh, which can uh, show us what's going on in the subconscious. It can show us generational patterning. It's, it's an awesome coaching tool. Mm. And then I send the frequencies that then they can continue to work with. Um, so how, how this sounds fascinating. How do you send the frequencies? So it, uh, the, the technology, it's just like a very small device and it's yeah. powered by uh, two different apps. There's one app right. for the microcurrent technology, which but you need to be there physically because you're using uh, wristbands for that. So you need oh, to be okay. people physically. But yeah. the other technology is using uh, radionics. And so in the other app for the radionics technology, we create a client record. We right. put in there a photograph of the client. We've got yeah. the identifier, so the name, address, date of birth, and place of birth, because it's only you in the universe that has those u unique identifiers. Yes. And in the, it's working in the quantum field. It's quantum technology based on yes. Tesla, Tesla's uh, you know technology. Yeah. And so uh, in, in the quantum field, there is no separation in time and space. So it doesn't matter where no. anybody is in the world. Mm. It can be located through the, those identifiers. The device scans their energy field, and then yeah. it then is able to, um, you know, I just press a button and it sends the frequencies to that person. So I just get them to put their attention above their head, they tune into yeah. the information field, and they can feel the the frequencies. It's extraordinary. Brilliant. Wow. And very exciting. Yeah, so that's brand new for you. Well, it's about a year old a year, now, is it? Yeah, yeah. a year old. Yeah. And this has brought in more abundance for me than any of my pre, you know, previous businesses. Uh, right. It's grown so quickly. Um, and do you know what? It's not like work. It's I'm in flow doing it. I just love helping people. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm creating training specifically for practitioners who want to use this uh, technology in the businesses so that when they actually invest in a device they can get a very very quick return on their investment i was in profit in my first 30 days michael yeah so from yeah. a two and a half thousand euro investment i got yeah. all that back and more in my first 30 days yeah and so i want to teach people how they can use this technology very quickly with clients yeah in order to uh, enhance the results that they're getting because it works very very quickly Mm. and how they can use this technology via Zoom because a lot of practitioners uh, with the world events that have happened have not yes. been able to see clients on a one-to-one -one basis. No. Because so of are you, distancing. Yeah, so are there, so you, you're kind of appealing to people that are already doing, you know, well-being work with their clients or coaching yeah. or yeah coaches therapists practitioners healers yes. reiki energy workers um so those are the people that i'm specifically working with uh, yes. but 82 percent of people that buy the device buy it for personal use they're not in a in a practitioner setting right which right, is great right. because the goal of, uh, of marcus who's the inventor of the equipment is to get the equipment into the homes of a hundred million people worldwide because in as it's helping them to raise a vibration it's helping them to sort of when when you match the frequency of something uh in the body say for example if you've got um pain there if you match the pain frequency it brings it into resonance and then uh, uh, can help to shift it so my dad yes. for example has really bad um rheumatoid arthritis and so I'll check in with him on a daily basis and I'll say, what's your pain level today, dad? And he might say like a seven, eight of 10. Bearing mm. in mind, he's got a really high pain threshold, right? So yeah. I'll run a pain program on him. And then, so 55 minutes later, which is the length of the pain program using the microcurrent technology, I'll yeah. then say, what's your pain level now, dad? And it will come down to about a two, eight of 10. Wow. So it means that his quality of life is vastly enhanced. Yeah, yeah there's been some days where his, his energy level has been so low like a one out of ten or even one day he couldn't even get out of his chair it was a zero i yeah. ran an energy program on him and then the next thing i know he's in the kitchen making dinner uh, <laughs> and i said i thought you had no energy he said oh i feel all right now i said well what's your energy level on a scale of one to ten and he said oh i'm about a five now 
So it means yeah. it can function. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it improves people's quality of life, doesn't it, by the sounds it of it. And what about um, seeing as you were doing work or be a different type of work with pets and things? What about animals? Oh, yeah, you can use the frequencies uh, with pets as well. And yeah. they've actually recently brought out frequencies specifically for pets with right. some uh, hardware that um, because like with the wristbands, these are designed for humans. And so yes. they've got some um, like sponges that you can put um, the electrodes around so that it goes around the animal's fur and you can adapt yeah. it for, for dogs, cats, horses, and people are having outstand, outstanding results. It's mm. phenomenal. Mm. Yeah. It really because... helps to speed up any healing that the, that the animals need. Yeah, I, I can well imagine that could potentially be huge because as humans, we kind of go, oh, no, no, I don't need it for myself. I want it for my dog or for my cat or, you know, because they see them as being more important. Well, <laughs> so, as a pet sitter, you know, I know that people spend more on their animals than they do on themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that that could potentially be huge, definitely fascinating and how it's long exciting. has it been around i mean two, two i'm not talking years. about the, yeah the, com the company set up two years ago but in oh, okay. uh, it's actually the parent company is called time waiver and that's been around uh, for over 12 years uh, right. it's technology which is tried it's tested but the time waiver technology is only for use by practitioners it's big equipment the entry level price is about 14,000 euros up to 50,000 euros plus so it's out mm. of the normal price range of the average person and yeah. there's been over 30 million euros of investment that's gone in uh, for R&D to actually develop it into what it is now which is a portable wearable device yeah that anybody yeah. can use fantastic wow well success with that Deborah that sounds amazing and it's come to you at exactly the right time um, yeah. During. Do, I, do you know? Do you know ahead. what? As well, Michael, it, it, it sort of uh, has brought all the skills that I've done in the past. Mm. It's like all packaged up now. It's like everything I've ever done in the past has come together in this yeah. business, and mm. I absolutely love it. Brilliant. Oh, well done. Well done. Okay. So, other projects. This is my main project right now. Uh, this right. is my main project, but I have been involved with uh, like a branding community. In 2017, I went to uh, Sammy Blindell's Vision, Voice and Visibility Summit in Manchester, which was a phenomenal event. I mean, mm. I've, I've attended many, many business events in my time, and this is the best event I've ever attended. And um, Sammy's created something called Ripple Fest, where like for one week in the month, instead of working in our businesses, we work on ourselves and on our businesses. Yes. And uh, I've been involved with Sammy's community for a while now. And um, we had a book collaboration project where there's 27 authors. We, we uh, co-authored a chapter each of a book called yes. The Law of Brand Attraction 2. And it was written... All, all of it was done in six days. We were on a really wow. tight schedule uh, because she wanted to release it on World Voice Day. And Dr. John D. Martini wrote the foreword for that book. Oh, and great. Uh, so the book was released on Kindle. It got to a number one bestseller uh, in four categories in the UK, in America. Uh, it was number six. It was number one in Australia, in Germany, Italy. And uh, the hard copy will be coming out uh, soon. So that's a lot of brand attraction too. And it's a fabulous book. And I have a chapter in there called Raise Your Frequency, Raise Your Game. And it's talking about how to raise your frequency and why it's important to do that and the benefits of doing that for business. And I'm sharing yes. their personal examples of, of my life. Mm. So what a, a bit of your story, your travel to Peru, things like that you're sharing in there. Yeah. And I talk, I talk about um, like my steps to happiness as well. 
yeah uh, and i share about my marriage breakup and how yeah. how i was able to find an empowering meaning for that i yeah. talk about that that pivoting point where i was asked by my coach where do you come on your list because mm. like how many people you know we, we talk through society to put other people before ourselves but what do they teach you on an airplane yeah yeah put you've got to put your own mask, mask on first and, yeah. it, and it's the same in life because you know i see many coaches and healers that are um not okay themselves but then they're providing these services to other people and it's like hand me down energy they're not using fresh energy they, you've got to look after yourself yes you've got to yeah. fill your own cup up um, yeah. and then serve people with the overflowing fresh energy not from your stale energy because your cup's half empty yeah yeah very good point indeed yeah i totally yeah. concur so if, with any, that. if anybody's interested in buying the book they can go to www.thelawofbrandattraction.com uh, they can put the country in there and it will take them straight through to whichever uh, amazon link for their specific right. country um Fantastic. And if anybody's well, interested in, in the frequency technology, I'm looking yeah. for pioneers to take this out into different countries in the world. You know, yes. we're right at the very start of um, a curve which is seeing um, like a huge demand for the product and we haven't got enough people to get it out there. So I'm, yeah. I'm actually looking for people to work with to come and join my team we, we all work together as a big team it, and it's great what i love about it is it's not just about me working on my own business we work as a team helping each yeah. other supporting each other and it's like we're a big family and i love that aspect to it we use a social selling model mainly using social media and yeah. i run webinars right great great Sounds incredible, definitely, Deborah. So many things that have happened in your life and uh, some amazing learnings and growth and experiences. Um, yeah, uh, from that very first time of cycling around the, the continent, mm -hmm. Europe, and uh, your travels in Peru and having that nomadic lifestyle yeah very very interesting indeed you're you're a great example to the world that that's for sure <laughs> oh thank you michael i just like to inspire people that you know they can create whatever life they want yeah they can create yeah. a life of our dreams um yeah. you know i just love everything about my life otherwise i wouldn't do it i wouldn't create that but you know it comes down to realizing that everything that we have in our life at the moment is of our own creation whether that's subconsciously or whether it's conscious so we might as well become a conscious creator of our own reality and this is what i help people to do as well i, I think that's the hardest thing for people to realize isn't it when even when they're in rough times if you turn around and say to them well you created it and they're going to go no i didn't it was him or her and you know they point the finger but yeah we've made the choice um whether it be relationships or working in businesses or you know we we made that first step to go there and then have that experience for our growth as well so yeah and and it's also recognizing that at a soul level our soul comes in to be born into certain circumstances yeah to, and we find that in our greatest adversity when we're going through that those dark nights of the soul which everybody does because we're on that hero's journey of, of life mm. it's in those yeah. dark nights of the soul that like the gems our gifts and when we dig and we look at what we're learning through that adversity and how are we coping with it how do we choose to respond to what's yes. going on around us but then it's like we we can then um, help other people going through that same process because yes. we've been there. We've found a path out there, out of that situation. And therefore, through sharing our own experiences, we're showing other people a way forward and giving them hope. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. Wow. So how can they learn? I know you shared about the book, um, but where can they learn more about you, about the um, the frequency healing system? Uh, could you 
point them in the right direction with some websites, your social yeah. media links. I'll put it all in the show notes as well, but just say it verbally as well in case that somebody's yeah. sitting there on their phone and typing <laughs> it in. The, the, the easiest way to uh, to find me is through uh, social tap um, because all my links are on there. So it's HTTPS okay. and then the colon and then yes. uh, forward slash forward slash and then it's S O S O C I A Socia Tap T A P yep. dot com and then forward slash Deborah D E B R A with a capital D. Sophia yeah. with a capital S, S O F I A, and then capital N for Magdalene, M A G D A L E N E. So it's Deborah Sophia Magdalene. Magdalene after the social tab. Be, yeah, and they need to be the initial capitals. Um, yeah. Failing that, if you can't find me on there, I've got a YouTube channel called The Frequency Alchemist. I'm on Facebook as Deborah Sophia Magdalene, also a business page, The Frequency Alchemist, also yes. on LinkedIn. Uh, Deborah Sophia Magdalene. So I'm, I'm all over social media if you just Google. Yeah, that, that might be the easiest way. Yeah, T type your name because she's an unusual name as well. So that's fantastic. Deborah, is there anything else that I haven't asked that you would have liked to have shared today? I'd just like to say thank you so much. It's been lovely reconnecting with you, Michael. Uh, and with you. And if anybody's out there and, you know, the, the feeling that the life isn't where they want it to go, just have hope, you know, that you can create, you know, one of the best investments I ever made was in me. And even now, you know, I, I reinvest all the commissions I make into my own personal development. We never yes. stop learning. We never stop growing. And it's about making that investment in you. Because yeah. the more that you can learn from, use mentors, use coaches, because you're shortening your learning curve. And yes. what I do now is I learn from the best in the, in, in the industry, um, yeah. the people that are already where I want to be. Um, over the years, I've, I've spent a huge amount in my own personal development. So I'm way ahead of the game in, in relation to other people. But then in relationship to where I want to go, building a global movement, it's like, okay, the, I need to learn some new skills. Yes. Um, and so we never stop learning, we never stop growing. You know, that's a really lovely point to make. And I, I remember what you said about how you didn't enjoy school. And same for me, by the way. But I, my learning didn't start until I left school, you know. That's when I really started to learn about myself, about life, about different things. In school, I learned nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what I mean. Uh, you, learn a yeah. little bit, but do you know what? I think travel is the best education. And I was amazed when I was traveling at how many families actually travel with the children rather than the children being in school, the homeschooled on the road whilst they're traveling. And that is the best education because they're learning life skills, which they don't teach you in school. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Deborah, thank you so much for your time. Lovely to see you on Zoom. I hope that we meet in person in the near future. If you're ever kind of Birmingham way on your quest with the vi with the frequency, let me know. Um, we'll have a cup of tea or coffee, a bite to eat. Uh, be great to see you in person and get that hug as well. Absolutely. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Birmingham's a good stop off point when I'm uh, down, you know, going down south as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.